The piece is looking at the water impacts, the potential water impacts of unconventional energy developments in Australia, particularly coal seam gas. Uh, those are impacts that public concern and government inquiries and also science points to as being key challenges to the acceptance of unconventional energy in Australia. So the piece is really about exploring options for reducing the burdens that those water impacts will have in Australia. Produced water is the water that comes out of the ground from aquifers as a result of extracting coal seam gas. So it goes hand in hand with coal seam gas development. You can't get coal seam gas unless you also get groundwater. In some cases it can be very large volumes of groundwater. So that can mean uh, depleting aquifers, it can mean depleting streams that are connected to aquifers, it can mean adverse impacts on the environment, it can change water quality, both groundwater quality and also surface water quality, where that produced water is disposed of into surface water streams. Where hydraulic fracturing is involved, it can also mean ch changing the aquifer structure. So these really have the potential to be severe and irreversible impacts if they're not managed properly. At the moment, generally speaking, states don't include coal seam gas developments within normal water licensing regimes. So they're not treated equally with, say, manufacturing or irrigation that does fall within those, those regular water licensing regimes. Secondly, often there's no comprehensive requirements to mitigate for the impacts on other water users and on the environment of produced water. So really we need to take a robust approach to those mitigation requirements. We need to make sure that uh, there are no undue burdens on other water users, whether they be using groundwater or surface water that's connected to groundwater where the produced water is extracted from. We also need to make sure that there are no uh, undue impacts on the environment that can't be mitigated. And mitigation requirements in general need to really take a robust approach. So they need to take account of the fact that there can be time lags between pumping groundwater and those impacts being felt. And also the fact that uh, impacts of one development can add to impacts of other developments. So there can be cumulative impacts. So mitigation requirements need to really take account of that as well. There needs to be some clarification of what the policy is across Australia. I think a uniform approach would be helpful. Coal seam gas development and un other unconventional energy development should be brought within the normal licensing regimes that apply to other types of groundwater using activities. And those mitigation requirements also need to be tightened up. So they need to be comprehensive, dealing not only with impacts on groundwater users as they quite frequently do now, but also with impacts on surface water users where surface water is connected to groundwater and mitigation uh, for impacts on elements of the environment that are not currently covered. So for example, on ecosystems that depend on groundwater and on rivers that depend on groundwater, as well as springs, which are also currently usually covered. The slow down and learn approach to risk assessment in the case of unconventional energy is really about drawing a middle line between, on the one hand, an all out ban of unconventional energy development uh, for reasons that people argue uh, the impacts can be very uncertain, and on the other hand, charging full speed ahead without adequately considering the kinds of risks and the kinds of impacts that could occur. So the slow down and learn approach would take an iterative uh, look at the, the impacts that could potentially manifest and allow some development whilst keeping uh, an open eye to the potential impacts as they appear and uh, regulating developments over time as more information is known.